Hello. Today we are starting in Mark chapter 12, verse 35. And this time, Jesus actually starts with a question. While Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he asked, How is it that the teachers of the law say that the Christ is the son of David? David himself, speaking by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? The large crowd listened to him with delight. This is interesting because Jesus isn't disputing with his questions, but confirming. He is confirming what scripture says, which is that the Messiah will be both a descendant of David and of God. This is said in many places, such as Second Samuel, which says, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. I will be his father, and he will be my son. As he taught, Jesus said, Watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted in the marketplaces, and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. Such men will be punished most severely. The teachers of the law were the ones that were supposed to be the most responsible, but they weren't. You could sum up most of what Jesus describes them as, as demanding recognition. When they wanted to be greeted, they didn't mean a simple hello. They wanted what I would describe as mini-worship. And teachers of the law couldn't be paid for teaching, but they could receive gifts, so they would often guilt people, such as widows, into giving them gifts. And they even were in competition with their fellow teachers, getting the best seats in the synagogue and taking the seats of honor. And they were just so showy. Look, if you need to declare your heart to the Lord, go ahead, but just get to the point. You know, some of y'all's prayers are a bit much. Anyways, Jesus makes it clear that demanding recognition is a sin. We need to be humble. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and poured in two very small copper coins, only worth a fraction of a penny. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Being a widow back then didn't mean you lost one source of income, you lost the source of income, so that's essentially homelessness. So she might legitimately only have had a fraction of a penny. Now, you may have heard this story before, but I want you to understand this. Jesus didn't say that she gave more than any single person. He said she gave more than everyone combined. Who knows what was actually given that day? Could have been a total of $50, could have been a total of $50,000, but her fraction of a penny was worth more than the rest of the donations in God's eyes. And you can even look into it deeper and notice that she had two coins. She could have kept one and donated one, but nope, she donated both. Now, this might scare us, but the lesson here isn't to give 100% of our money, or even 99% or 80%. Like, the percentage doesn't matter. And this even isn't specifically about church tithe. Don't get me wrong, you definitely need to tithe, but Jesus is talking about all circumstances where we can give not just money, but also time and effort. What Jesus wants us to know are these three things. One, give in humbleness. I'm not saying awards and plaques are necessarily bad, but give with the expectation to get zero recognition. And just don't brag. Secondly, give joyfully. It doesn't say that the widow was joyful, but I think it's implied. I'm the kind of person that will do mostly anything you ask of me, but I'll whine about it. So... I definitely need to not whine about helping people. I've heard it said before that if you begrudgingly give your tithe, then God doesn't want it. So yeah, don't whine. And thirdly, sometimes you need to give before you receive. After the widow had donated, she was down to zero, and she had no idea where her next coin was coming from. And we don't know either. Perhaps God blessed her and she tripped over a giant bag of gold later, but we don't know and she didn't either. The future is scary because we don't know what it holds. That's why we have to put our faith in God. Remember Matthew 6.26? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. 
Are you not much more valuable than they? So know that Jesus recognizes the humble. He sees you in your struggles and he will take care of you.